Alright guys, welcome back to the bench, and today we're going to be looking at this BME280 weather station, uh, specifically the transmitter side, and power consumption. I have removed the 3.3 volt regulator um, and the power LED, uh, and I, I'll try to insert a clip of that uh, just after this, but um, I also removed the resistor from the the LED on pin 13 because I'm using that on the SPI bus so it was lighting every time that the that, that um, clock line changed which is frequent enough I thought I'd uh, disable it as well. This right here is the power LED whenever this Arduino has power this LED will be lit. We really don't need that on something that's battery powered because it will be constantly drawing power so we can remove both the LED and the dropper resistor. We can also remove this um, linear voltage regulator because the input voltage uh, that we'll be providing this uh, Arduino it's perfectly capable of handling both the highest and lowest voltages we'll be giving it. In this case I think we'll be providing uh, battery voltage from uh, an 18650 cell I will have a battery protection circuit and charge circuit on this, um, but basically that means that the highest voltage we'll be seeing is something like 4, 4.1 volts, and the lowest voltage will be the battery cutoff voltage, which is around 2.8 volts. Um, and this Arduino is perfectly capable of handling that whole range. So we don't really need the linear voltage regulator in this case. Alright, so I've removed the LED, and now I will attempt to remove this um, voltage regulator. At this point in the clip, I've removed the voltage regulator, LED, and dropper resistor. I'm also going to remove the resistor for the LED on pin 13 which shows under that clip there. The biggest changes that I made are with the I included the low power library um, which allows me to sleep the microcontroller for eight seconds using the built-in watchdog timer and also um, I, I've started sleeping the radio during that time. So you should be able to see uh, the changes well that it's going to a low power state uh, in the meter here, which is on the 200 milliamp range. It's a cheap meter, so I have no idea how accurate it is, but this should at least give you an idea that it is doing what we want it to do. So I'm going to plug this in here. Jumps to... Jumped up, and then we got our first packet. Now we're in sleep mode. It's about 500 microamps, and that is how fast it can transmit. So, after 8 seconds, there, we have a new packet. So it's transmitting successfully. Of course, this is not a very far distance to be transmitting, but um, you can see we are going in and out of sleep state uh, pretty well here. So this should significantly increase the battery life of this device. So the next um, thing I want to do is bring you out to the other side of the river which is where I want to put uh, this sensor. And I'm going to try to use this project box that um, I showed in the last post bag video and um, I have a solar panel on the way that sh should be able to um, to charge some NICAD or NIMH batteries. I realized that um, I can't power this whole thing from a lithium ion cell because even though the Arduino can take 3 point or 4 volts or whatever, this radio's maximum is um, uh, 3.6 
for sustained and 3.9 is absolute max. So I can't really run it off of that and expect it to live very long. So I think I'm going to use uh, two nickel metal hydride cells. They're rated at um, uh, 2,500 milliamp hours. So that should give me a decent battery life. Um, and they're also, I think, at least easier to charge uh, from a solar panel. So look for that in the future. But the, before I do a range test, what I'm going to try to do is replace this wire antenna with this spring antenna that I showed in the last one. The receiver side already has one connected, um, but I wanted to do this side on camera. So we're going to try for some on-camera soldering. See how well that works. Turn on the iron here. I've unplugged it, which is why the current dropped to zero. First we're going to unsolder the existing wire. I basically just pulled that out. And then I'm going to attempt to push this through the hole. Alright, it seems to have worked, and now I'm going to solder it by adding some new solder so that it will stay in place. To be careful that it doesn't just flop over. Seems to have worked. All right, and so now for the range test. Um, well, not really range test, but whether whether I can get that far. Um, I'm going to leave this device um, in here uh, by the window, and I'll take this device, which has the display on it um, and an RSSI reading at the bottom, and I will go across the river and see uh, what the signal strength looks like. Just for reference, the place I'm trying to go is right across the river there. Um, so I think this should be well within spec of what these radios can do. All right, well, see you on the other side. All right, so we are across the river from my apartment building now. Um, you can sort of see it there through the trees. Um, and we're basically standing. There's a little bit of a clearing. Um, amid some trees. So uh, what I'd probably do is put the sensor in that tree right there. Um, but you, as we can see, it, the, we're getting pretty much direct sun. This is the, the right side to be on. And uh, let's actually test out and see if we get reception. I'm going to need three hands for this. So. All right, so I've connected it up, and uh, it takes three hands, so unfortunately I won't be able to show you it connecting, but you should be able to see the dot in the lower right-hand corner blinking when we get packets. And right now, I'm getting an RSSI of about 80. Um, it's pretty good. I mean, it's not great. 90 is about where it cuts off, but 80 is, I think, perfectly acceptable. So now, if I bring it over to where the trees are here it seems actually to be even just a little bit better um... well about the same so hopefully i'll be able to put it in that project box um, add some batteries and a solar cell and uh... have it just be transmitting for me Anyway, so that's exciting. Um, if anyone has any good ideas for uh, weatherproofing a box that needs to have a barometric pressure sensor in it, uh, yeah, please put those in the comments below. Thanks. Bye.